Hey there guys, Zach here for Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a first look at the new Microsoft Edge built on Chromium. This is a project Microsoft announced back in December of last year and essentially what this is is an entire rebuild of the Edge browser using Google Chrome's code base. So for those who don't know, Google Chrome is built on something called Chromium and uses the Blink rendering engine. And Microsoft has adopted that code base and is building its own browser on top of that as well now. So Google Chrome uses Chromium and now Microsoft Edge uses Chromium as well. And this is what it looks like. So if you've used a web browser, it looks just like a web browser. You're gonna see similarities between both Microsoft Edge and Google Chrome here, since Edge is now sharing similar features and functions from the Chromium code base. Uh, but Microsoft is sort of taking this and making it its own. So if you're a fan of Chrome, you will be a fan of the new Microsoft Edge. It behaves more or less identical to Google Chrome. It even supports the same extensions. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but for now, let's take a look at um, the user experience and what you can expect if you're an Edge user. So this is the default new tab page. It looks pretty similar to um, the old Edge tab page, uh, except it's a little bit more customizable now. So if you come up to the hamburger menu here, you can see we have a, a couple of options for our layouts. Uh, right now we're set to focused, which gives us the search bar and our frequently visited websites. We can scroll down to get access to the newsfeed if you want to see that. But if we come up to inspirational, we can turn on the Bing daily wallpaper. So if you're a fan of Bing's uh, daily wallpaper, which gets updated with a new landscape and image of something every day, you can have that directly put into your new tab page every single day, which is nice. Again, you can scroll down to your newsfeed if you want to see that as well. But then there's informational, which sort of brings up the newsfeed. So you don't have to scroll to see the first few things in the newsfeed by default. And then there's also a custom option as well. So we can turn on and off different modules. So if I don't want to see image of the day, but I do want to see the news feed by default, I can have that like that. And hey, now it looks like the old version of Microsoft Edge, which is quite nice. We come to personalize here. We can also change what kind of topics we see on the news feed. So if you don't like politics or sports, or whatever, you can turn those on and off at will, which is nice to see. And that's pretty much it for the new tab page. Very basic, but nice to see. You can now bring in the Bing wallpaper, which previously wasn't possible in the old version of Microsoft Edge. Um, so if we come to the sort of UI at the top here, it looks like a browser UI. There's nothing too crazy here. We have the new tab button and stuff. We have refresh. We have our unified search and address bar. But then we have our user profile picture. Now, if you're a Chrome user, you'll be familiar with this already. But for Edge users, this is quite new. You can now see your face or your profile picture, at least, in the address bar at all times, which is nice. We can manage our profile from here. We can browse as a guest and we can add new, a new profile. So the new version of Microsoft Edge supports multiple profiles, just like Google Chrome does. Again, if you're a Chrome user, this is all old news to you, but to Edge users, this is pretty interesting to see. So we can add a new profile here. So this is test profile. We can add an icon for it and we can add it. So we can now log into this profile and have our own saved passwords, our own history, our own favorites without having to affect your default profile that is logged in with your Microsoft account. You can see here, you can sign in with your Microsoft account. I am signed in with mine down here. If we click on sign in here, it will ask you, hey, would you like to use a Microsoft account or a different Microsoft account? And you can get set up using that. Uh, let's uh, manage this profile because we don't want it. Let's remove it. We'll go back to mine. And that's how that works, which is nice. Okay, so if you come up to the triple dot menu or settings and more menu as they call it and click on that, you'll see this sort of drop down which looks very similar to what it does in Google Chrome. Uh, this is how you get into things like settings, extensions, downloads, history and all that good stuff. So if we jump into settings actually, we'll see that the settings page has been updated. It's looks entirely different than it did in the old version of Edge. Uh, but there's a lot of options in here to choose from. Again, we can add a new profile directly from here if we want to. We can edit our existing profile so I can change my name if I want to or my profile picture. So here's the sort of profile settings. If we come down to sync, you can see that um, we can turn on and off different sync options. Uh, in the initial previews, you'll be able to sync your favorites, but over time, you'll be able to sync extensions, history, settings, open tabs, addresses, phone numbers, and passwords, which is nice to see as well. It says down here, more of the features listed above will become available in the coming months. Not everything is working in this build just yet because this is, you know, it's still beta software. Not everything is done yet. There's features that will be coming in the future. Uh, but for now, we're just taking a, a first look at this initial preview build, which is nice to see. So if we come down to passwords, there's a simple password manager here. So we can offer to save passwords, sign in automatically, and we can click on these options down here to see what is saved. We can even show the password if you need to, if you've forgotten it, which I'm not gonna do here. So yes, this version of Edge, just like any web browser, supports automatically fitting out payment info. We can add a card here, we can add a card number and stuff, the name and card and all that good stuff. We have addresses more again. If you're filling out, say, a billing form or an address in shipping info and stuff, Edge will offer to 
fill out that info for you, just like most browsers. And then down here, we have import browser data. Now this will show up the first time you run this browser uh, because what Microsoft wants is to sort of get rid of the friction between setting up a new browser for the first time. If you're using Chrome or Opera or the old version of Edge, Microsoft wants to make the transition to this new version of Edge very plain and very simple. So you'll get the option to import your favorites, saved passwords, autofill data, and browsing history. And once you click import, you will pick up exactly where you left off. Everything will be where you left it, all your passwords, all of your browsing history, will all be in the new version of Edge and um, you simply won't miss a beat. You may have to click on login on some of the web pages, but your password should be saved so you won't have to type stuff. So that's very nice to see. Now, if we move down to appearance here, uh, very basic customized options here. Uh, but uh, like I said, this is an early preview and over time, hopefully this will fill out with more stuff. We can show and hide the home button. We can show and hide the favorites bar. We can change the default zoom percentage of web pages. We can change font sizes and we can also customize fonts in a little bit more detail in here as well. On startup, very simple here. We can change whether we go to a new tab page or just open up the web pages you had open in the previous browsing session. Go down to privacy and services. There's a lots of different um, options in here. By default, send do not track requests are off, but you can turn that on quite easily. Now, if you come down to the address bar here, you can see that um, by default, it's set to Bing as you would expect since this is a Microsoft browser, but you can change that to Google quite easily. So this bar up here will now search with Google instead of Bing if that's what you prefer. You can also manage search engines in here. You can remove them if you want. For some reason, Twitter's in here, which I didn't realize was a search browser. Um, you can remove YouTube as well. Why not? And there we go. So we now have Bing and Google and stuff, which is nice. So if we come down to site permissions, if you're a Chrome user, this is pretty standard to you. But if you're a Microsoft Edge user, this is a little bit more granular. You can now turn on and off different permissions for websites based on, you know, anything. So you can flash JavaScript, notifications, pop-ups and redirects, automatic downloads, camera, locate, anything in here, you can now turn on and off for specific websites, which is fantastic to see. You see, if we come in here, for example, we can go into here and we can make it so some websites aren't allowed to show pop-ups and some are and so on and so forth. So this is fantastic. This allows you way more control over what websites are allowed to do what when they are being displayed on your web browser, which is good. Then there's download is very simple here. You can ask where to save each file before downloading if you want. That is set to off by default though. Then we have languages. Of course, there's a hundred different languages to choose from. There's his printing, you know, there's if you want to manage printers, you can do that from here. Then we have system. Continue running background apps when Microsoft Edge is closed. This is a Chrome, Chromium thing. This is set to on by default. Um, you can turn it off. So once you close the browser, it stays closed. <laughs> uh, by default, that is on though. Uh, use hardware acceleration when available and open proxy settings. So we have reset and about Microsoft Edge. So that is a quick look in the settings. So we come back out and go to say a website. So let's go to Windows Central. You'll see that web performance is pretty great. If you've used Chrome, it's pretty much identical. In fact, it should be identical. There's no reason it'll be different. Uh, if we go to YouTube, which is where this will be most apparent, you'll see this <laughs> the website loads pretty much instantly and we can load pages. So if we go to Windows Central here, and run one of our uh, videos. You'll see the page loads instantly, as do the videos, and so do the comments and stuff. Nothing lags. The web page won't hang like it did in the old version of Microsoft Edge. It just works like it's supposed to, which is fantastic to see. Say so we go to Twitter, for example, and just load up Twitter here. Web pages just load up and perform just like you'd expect. It is a web browser, and that's how web browsers behave. Um, regarding touch support, since this is a big thing for people, it seems to be working okay. Um, yeah, this this feels just like it does in the old version of Microsoft Edge. Um, there's nothing too different here. If we open up the old version of Microsoft Edge, I can actually show you that. Uh, where is Microsoft Edge? Here's the old version for those of you who remember that. Uh, yeah, so you don't get the, the sort of pinch out animation, but the sort of zoom in stuff is more or less the same. Uh, that's not too. That's not terrible. Yeah, it feels it feels nice. So I'm I'm glad to see that. Um, again, so there's no there's no ink to web pages. There's no set tabs aside just yet. This is a very early preview. Um, over time, Microsoft may add those features into the new version of Edge. They may not. They haven't committed to a feature list. Uh, they did say that they will bring over old features that were popular in in the old version of Edge. So if set tabs aside was a popular feature, it will show up in this new version of Edge over time. But since this is an initial preview, sort of more aimed at developers, uh, that stuff isn't in here just yet. We can also flick to go back. So if, we, if we're using touch, we can do that. And that goes back like that. We can go forward like that, just like you can in the old version of Edge. So, so far, um, the initial impressions of this new version of Edge is that it's very, very stable. If you've used Chrome, I mean, 
there's very little different here in regards to stability and performance. It just runs very, very well. Um, if you right click on things, I do like how uh, context menus have uh, shadows behind them, slightly rounded corners as well as in the address bar up here so we can see tabs up here also have slightly rounded corners as well. Just a minor design aesthetic change. Um, there's sort of like a shadow effect behind here. I hope they add the acrylic blur effect and the reveal effects into the UI up here, just like the old Edge, because that was very nice and arguably one of the best parts about the old version of Edge, uh, its UI. So I hope they add that stuff back over time. But again, since this is an early preview, it's it's normal to not have those kind of things in just yet. Of course, we can still do our favorites and stuff up here. If we click on this, you can add it to favorites. If we go down into favorites here, you can see it's in my favorites bar. We can manage our favorites and what not. Now, extensions. This is quite a big deal. If one of the reasons you never used the old version of Edge was because it didn't have uh, enough extensions, that's changed. So, so if we come up to extensions here, there is a new extension store from Microsoft Edge, which is where all of the verified extensions for Edge are living. And over time, more and more should be added. You know, this works as you would expect. If you want to install Adblock, we can do that. We press on Git, press Add Extension. That'll take a second. And now it's installed. And that works just like you would expect. But say there's an extension you want that isn't in the Microsoft Edge Insider Store. Well, you can now go to the Chrome Web Store and install those ones as well. So if there's an extension you want that runs on Chrome, you can run it on this version of Edge as well. It says up here, to add extensions from the Chrome Web Store, select Manage Extensions, Allow Extensions from the Store. So we click on this and go down to Allow Extensions from Other Stores, press on Allow again. We can now refresh this web page, go down to Anything. We can click on Anything here. So uh, let's click on, I don't know, that one, and Add to Chrome, Add Extension, and that will now be installed in Microsoft Edge as well. So any Chrome extension now runs in Microsoft Edge with ease, and it's very good to see. So if you're somebody who has 100 different extensions in Chrome, all of which were not available in Edge, they now run in Edge, which is fantastic. So real quick, back of the book stuff here that I've just noticed while I was playing with it a little bit. Um, there is a dark mode that is in um, the sort of flags area. So we go to edge colon slash just flags. There's a whole bunch of like developer options, experimental features here. Um, and we've enabled Microsoft Edge theme. So what this does is listens to the uh, setting in settings here. So if we go into personalization and change your color, say we're using dark right now, which is why edge is now dark. Uh, but if we go into settings and change this to light, what we should see here is edge turn, turn to light as well. So that's how that works. For some reason, that behavior was off by default in this unreleased build of Microsoft Edge. Uh, in the public preview, this might be enabled by default. So anyway, yeah, all of these flags are pretty interesting. I haven't looked into all of them just yet, but if you've used Chrome, it's pretty similar to that. If you just do Chrome colon slash that's flags, there's a bunch of different experimental features that are off that you can enable and test and stuff, which is nice to see. Regarding the PDF reader, um, it's very basic. It's basically the Chrome PDF reader. There's no inking and stuff. Like I said, a lot of that inking stuff isn't in these initial preview builds. It does read PDFs, which is uh, at least nice to see. Also, I've noticed if you right click on the address bar, you can get straight to the emoji picker, which is uh, pretty cool. Now there's also um, uh, apps thing. So you can now install web apps uh, using Microsoft Edge. So if we go to say uh, mobile.twitter.com, as you can see here, we are now in the mobile web app. And uh, if we go down into apps here, we can install this app. Press install. And now this app, now this website runs as an app window, which is pretty cool to see. You can see it's in its own window here, which is pretty cool. There's some options up here that you can change and whatnot. You can uninstall it. But then if you go into Edge again and go down to apps, we can actually see our apps that have been installed in this UI. So there's plenty of web apps you can do. I think there's, hang on, pdra.rocks. Hopefully this is still a website. Yes, there's, there's a whole bunch of different websites here. Um, let's see what's interesting. Paper planes. This is like a sort of demo game thing, but this is a web app and I can install this as well. And now this runs in its own window, which is nice to see. So this is, this is like an advancement of the PWA support Microsoft is building into Windows 10 and whatnot. It's now in Edge as well, and you can install web apps quite easily. You can change whether or not these open in their own windows or as in a tab, uh, which is great. And yes, you can also create shortcuts for the desktop and start menu, which is good to see.
So there you have it guys, that's a very quick look at the new version of Microsoft Edge. This should be rolling out in preview form to insiders in the next couple of weeks um, and will roll out officially in a version of Windows 10 at some point in the future. Uh, this is fantastic, this is a new version of Edge, it works very well, I'm excited for it. And yeah, so thanks so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.